Hello everyone, Shadefire here, and today I'm taking a first two impressions look at Kina Bridge of Spirits, a game by the former animation studio Ember Lab, who you might know from some of their videos published on YouTube, like that Majora's Mask one, which looked very good, and now they have pivoted to making games as well, and I've heard that this is a very good one for their first effort, and even just for any game in general, not just good for a first try. So we're going to check this out. I've been looking forward to this since it was announced. It just looks like a, a cool, charming game. And that's really all I need. So let's get in here. I'm going to go with Spirit Guide because I've heard story mode is a little too easy. Enemies are aggressive. Okay. I'm going to bump this up. Also, I'm really hoping my cursor will disappear once we get in-game. Because I've had a lot of games recently where it just doesn't hide it at all. Unique wooden masks are carved to honor the dead. Placed in sacred shrines, these masks gradually return to dust, symbolizing the spirit's peaceful journey into the next life. Not all spirits can travel this path alone. Struggling with tragedies of their past, they linger and become dangerous. Masters called upon to help these trapped and violent manifestations are known as spirit guides. So... <laughs> Like the summoners in Final Fantasy X. You've got to point the dead at where they should go. But yeah, it's not really surprising that a game from a CG animation studio would be pretty. Like, they kind of get a pass on that automatically. Because this does have very much of a Pixar kind of 3D Disney look. I mean, obviously, the one that comes most to mind is uh, Raya, because that came out recently. Here we are. Everything looks pretty good. It's running very well. A game auto set to Ultra, even though, as folks know, I don't have the best graphics card right now. Still waiting on one to become available. <laughs> like, at this point, I might not actually get a 30 series until the 40 series is announced, simply because they might actually be available by that point. But I can't really wait and get a 40 instead because, you know, I'm still sitting on a 1080 here. Which has been very solid. You know, I'm still playing most games at higher settings. So it's not like I'm hurting for a, an upgrade. But certain games definitely need a bit more power. And I love the glow of the staff in this dark area. I feel like it's just there to show off. Okay, where are we going? We are following the spirit. The spirit is guiding us. You guys, you guys need some guiding? You need me to send you off? Or do you, you already know where you're going? So obviously we need to go through there. Ah, okay. So this makes the stone pop out and then our pulse activates it. I appreciate this so far has been a tutorial with very little tutorializing. They've given me one button to work with so far and said, figure it out. Attack, heavy attack. 
I've heard the gameplay itself is pretty typical of your third-person action game. You know, not a character action game, but just a regular third-person action RPG. Don't know if I have a dodge yet. Okay, left control. Oh, that's awkward. But space is jump, so we can't use that for dodging. I might have to rebind that to something else, though. I mean, he doesn't look very aggressive. And Kina's very fast. Anything with this? Just seems like it's been activated. There's another one over here. Even for a cave, this is very luscious with life. I still think I want to turn down the sensitivity a little, as always. Ooh, yeah, that's pretty high by default. Also, <laughs> the amount you have to slide this for that number to go down, it only goes down to 0. 0.4. Okay. I'll put it, like, here. That's a little more fluid. I've had some people ask me before if I'm using a controller to aim in, like, FPS games because of the way I tend to jerk the camera around. It's just because I have a very small amount of space for my mouse. You know, I don't have a lot of open desk that I can just yank my arm all the way across to turn around. So I make very slight movements. She's got a fancy little twirl for her double jump. Also, I might turn... It set me to ultra, but I think... I can turn, like, one thing down, because it's a little hitchy. Um... I turn down ambient occlusion. Wow, does it go from medium to ultra? No, okay, medium to high. I was looking at these two settings. Um, shadows I'll set to high, and the ambient occlusion to medium. Shadows are usually the first sacrifice on the altar of FPS gains, because they're not that important. You know, you don't look at the shadows that often. Small children! What are you doing in these woods? Interact is Q? I saw him here somewhere. <gasps> also, it's weird because this is a very framey cutscene, but go? it's, I'm pretty sure, real time and not. <gasps> or, it's not real time, it's rendered. Ghost kids. But yeah, it doesn't make sense to me that the cutscene would run so much worse than 
the actual gameplay unless it was pre-rendered. I don't know, maybe it's the V-Sync messing with the actual cutscene. got a weird magic infection in her arm. So yeah, these guys are called Rots, which is kind of a weird name for something friendly. But then again, Rot is a natural part of the forest life. I only say that because Kind of the main enemy of this is like a kind of force of corruption. There she is. Run. Oh, well, he found me another one. So these guys are all are collectibles, but also like they have certain things they do. Now we got one on our shoulder and one following us around. There is also apparently a pretty good photo mode in this, as you'd want for a game that looks good. Don't know how you activate it though. Controls, control remapping. Photo mode is P, or up on the D-pad. Sit with rot is C. <laughs> Use mask is T. Okay, apparently sit with rot doesn't work yet. Maybe because they haven't told me I can do it. I don't know how to get it to focus in a specific spot. Probably the aperture setting. Oop, didn't mean to take a photo there. Oh, there's an autofocus. I didn't realize F and R were focused down there. down. I wanted to like sit on this rock and get a photo. <laughs> oh, I'm not allowed to stand on the rock. We'll get more photo opportunities. She also has kind of a blank expression normally, so I hope you can change that. I make no more apologies for using photo mode in videos. It's just something I enjoy doing in games, so you're all gonna have to deal with it. Yeah, I guess they are just, like, natural decay, because fungi sprouts when you collect them. Rot sprites. Hi, Benny. So do I just have to run around hitting that on everything to find more of them? I guess they kind of point them out. They're like, hey, over here. They snitch on their own kind. Oh, there we go. Press C to interact with the rot. Well, don't sit don't sit in a bush to do that. Sit on this rock right here. Very photogenic. Apparently you can't actually open photo mode during this. What if I do the other photo mode? No, nope, not supported. It's 
weird that they don't let you do photo mode with this, though. Hang out with your little rotting friends. Okay, that tree looks pretty sickly. <laughs> it's got like a big red eye on it. Run quick! Pretty good just ambient soundtrack right now too. For running around exploring. Which is something I heard from one of the reviews. I like how it gets faint when you're near the corruption. So for far away ones like this, as long as there are crystals, the signal will transmit. Secret behind the waterfall, there's always one. Are you a special rot? There's a pose option, but I can't select it right now. I wonder if that's just because it's also not activated yet. Or if there are just certain places where you cannot pose. Right, what's going on with this gross tree over here? I really like the way this looks, this corruption area. Like, it's equally as colorful almost as the rest of the world. Collect more rot to purify this dead zone heart. Treasure. How did you get inside that chest? Who put you there? Alright. So we have leveled up, which also leveled up our rot. Press R to send the rot onto objects in the environment. Okay, so I guess I can send them onto that rotting heart now. bros down here. Nope. No, we already opened this. You know that. You saw me do it. I appreciate that they made them cutesy companions, but they don't talk. I feel like that can often take away from the kind of, uh, charming factor of the designs when they are just annoying voiced characters. Yeah. Similar to Dicey in Lost and Random, he doesn't talk either. Okay. Well, that was what we were supposed to do to progress, I'm pretty sure. We've turned it from corruption to just natural rot. Climb up there. What does this say? Does it say anything? Uh, it's a lantern. <laughs> Gotta be something down here, though. I cannot go off this waterfall. Really? No, like, waterfall sprite down here? <laughs> oh, 
Those are nasty looking. Oh, this one's gonna defend itself, isn't it? Enemies frighten the rot. The rot are scared and have gone into hiding. Attack enemies to build courage. Okay, so that's how the rot abilities mechanic works, is they just build up courage to help you out. So what do these things make? Kind of like rotting tree fellas. I think I'm gonna remap the dodge to one of my side mouse buttons. I think I need the bind for these guys. They're like little rot goblins. Or, not rot goblins, corruption goblins. Okay, I think they're gonna keep coming until I... pop the heart. And then send them up there to the other one. So there's like a spawner heart, and then the actual heart. I want to see if I could get her... She has like a really wide swing on the end of your combo. A little fuzzy though. Can you see the hair kind of like flickering even though this is supposed to be paused? I don't think it likes me doing the combat animations. Because it like freezes the motion, but then like doesn't completely freeze it? Wasn't sure if there was another rot down there. Does look really nice though. The rot are really strong. <laughs> They're like ants. They can lift up to ten times their own body weight. Actually, I think ants is something like a hundred times, but whatever. And then shift. Tell them to move it. Which I think I need to use to jump up. Not sure what I need that for. I might need it to hold down a platform. Okay. What are these? I don't know what those berries do, but they like them. Here's where I need to move it to, so yeah. tell them to grab that, move it over here. I mean, they're kind of like Pikmin, except less disposable. <laughs> Can't just grow more of them. There's also something up there. something over here. Get some crystal currency. Don't know what that's for yet. Can you pick that up? Okay. Fixing that guardian statue. Not for any particular reason. So 
There's like a little bridge down there or something. It looks like a knockdown. Is there anything? You notice too that she doesn't like just go. She doesn't just tell the rot to like go get that, fetch that. She's like, can you please move that? That'd be really nice, you guys. Oh no, I've fallen into a world hole. Oh jeez, I like wedged between. Okay, there's just literally just a hole in the ground there that shouldn't be there. <laughs> well, I found a bug. I'm also seeing Kina's eyeballs occasionally here. Hey, can you guys help me out? Can you pull me out of the ground? Wow, I actually made it out. Weird. Oh, it's it's consistent, though. It's still there, that hole. But yeah, it seems like there's enough junk in the environment here that I can kind of make it back out. So watch out for that specific spot. I've never seen a bug like that where you can fall through... Well, I guess I have. I was going to say, where you can fall through an area where there isn't an obvious, like, seam or anything. But at least we didn't fall out of the world. We just fell into the, like, ground. Let me help you. I can heal these spirits and restore balance to the forest. I know you are kind. You sense the power that flows through this land, but you do not fully understand it. Very familiar voice. That's how I like it. This land can be healed, but you cannot stay here, spirit. You must move on. You are the one who does not belong. I will never abandon my people. Kind of thought we'd fight him, but no. Summoned a boss and then disappeared. Okay, so we have a shield. Which uh, I'm popping at all the wrong times. You can't immediately repop it, so. Should be dodging instead, though. I'm going to rebind dodge because it's kind of awkward to switch between shield and dodge. Controls. Assuming it will let me remap this, which I don't know if it will. Dodge to forward, I guess. That way I don't have to actually like take my hands off the controls to dodge. I can use my thumb for it. Let me help you. Okay, got this this time. He does hit pretty hard, though. Three hits and I'm down. Activate your shield at the right moment to parry. My problem with that is that... You have to hold it to shield, so that makes it a lot harder to time the parry. And he broke the shield. And 
And also, you can't roll out of combos. Like, if I'm like this, I can't roll until she's done the swing. Alright, I'm learning. This is a learning fight. <laughs> the gatekeeper boss. Let me help. See, there I tried to wait and then pop the shield, but it was too late. interrupt the combo with the shield, though. Yeah, see there, I was mid-combo when I tried to <laughs> shield, so you can't actually interrupt. I mean, he's a fairly simple boss in terms of his attack patterns. He just hits really hard. Let me help you. I like that he has such an unassuming name like Sprout, though. It's that last hit in the combo where she does a big swing that fucks up my dodge. Get him, boys. So I didn't actually learn the parry mechanic there properly. I'll have to test that out against something easier. I mean, it could simply be that these cutscenes are, you know, 29.94 FPS. You can come out. It's safe now. Look, Sire, she cleared away the poison. The little guys can eat it. <laughs> they love it. <laughs> My name's Kana. What are you two doing out here, alone in the forest? Don't worry about us. We've been here a long time and take care of ourselves. I can see that. You both look very strong. Do you know who that spirit was, with the horned mask? We don't know, but when he shows up, the gross poison grows stronger. Hey, what are you doing here in the forest? I'm searching for the sacred mountain shrine. Can you take me there? It's also weird that there's like a freeze frame at get the end to of the every cutscene. You have to help us with something first. Our brother Tar was trapped deep in the forest. We need you to help him. Great idea, Saya. That'll be easy for her. Did you see what she did to that stick guy? Help us free Tar, and we'll take you to the Mount Shrine. Woohoo! Come on, our village is this way. Did we just find like a bunch of them? Also, are they all just going to follow me at once? My rot crew. Well, we got a pleasant vista over here. Got to check it out. See, like, this one is in engine and not pre-rendered. A late title card, there it is.
There does appear to be a village up ahead. Map available. Map. Oh, it's fading again. I was going to say, map not very useful right now. <laughs> but yeah, we got a uh, layout here. We got a village. We got probably our objective over there. And then the mountain shrine is presumably right there. But we're going to be polite and do the mission. Also, I think there's a lock in the way. So I don't think this is super, like, open world or anything. I think it just has these large areas you wander through. I mean, like, would you call near Automata... Automata, sorry. I know people love to say Automata because it's like a fun Automatopoeia. But Automata is probably the more correct way to say it based on the old word automaton. Before robot was a term. But yeah, would you consider that an open world game? Because I don't really. Even though there's like stuff to do and stuff to find, it's more just kind of big maps. Though, I mean, what exactly makes an open world, right? Is it just a big area with a bunch of like random things to do in it? A bunch of little side objectives? And like Death Stranding is considered an open world game, but it's a big map where there's not a lot of extra shit to do. You're mostly just doing the things that the game wants you to do. Instead of doing little side weird missions. The spring that runs beneath the forge carries with it energy from the mountain shrine. Okay. I'm guessing that's just telling me how to clear that up. So, we can't get through any of this stuff. It seems to be rotted from the other side. So this is a dead village. I'll wait for you at the water shrine in the Forgotten Forest. Okay, well, to get to him, we gotta go through this one, which I'm guessing will clear up that one ahead of us. I mean, I can jump over this, but it's blocked off there too. I think this is just us seeing our future progression here. Alright, we got three spawner hearts. So these have masks, which means these are also corrupted spirits. The rot are not afraid right now. A beautiful, stinky flower. Hat cart discovered. Karma and upgrades. Create karma by defeating corrupted enemies, restoring the environment, and finding fruit for your rot to eat. Okay, so that's what the things like restoring the statue and stuff were doing for us. I guess I just didn't see the little pop-up. So we have 75 karma, 8 rot, and 75 crystal. wonder if crystal is how we upgrade Kina. Nope, that also uses karma. Sprint attack. Or, well, I guess I need to upgrade these first. Oh, that's unlocked already. 150. So I don't have enough resources to unlock anything except the sprint attack. 
there's a spirits tab that we can't access. So I'm guessing that's for like special rot. So how do I actually sprint? Kind of seems like she's sprinting, but she's not. Not E. I feel like it's going to be a weird control. I think that's maybe one thing you'll get when you have like an animation studio switching to making games is non-standard controls. So we can get hats for our rot, as you're seeing. That's one of the collectibles, but they don't actually do anything. And this is a fast travel rock. So the area we came from doesn't seem important, and we got all the rot there. Rot, hats, flower shrine, spirit mail, and cursed chests. Taro's tree, village. So yeah, there's a bunch of stuff to look for. I guess it is maybe an open world then, if there's a sufficient amount of extra shit lying around. Eat up, boys. No? Why are you all looking at me like that? So that's still blocked by a barrier. To accept the challenge of the god tree, one must reach the top of its branches. I gave them that fruit, and they just let it rot, as is their way. Crystal does anything up there? They do like to sometimes just teleport onto stuff and stare at you. Hmm. Seems to be the same mask he's wearing. The question is, what caused the death of this village in the first place? The rot seem quite fond of you. They're usually timid. <laughs> Something tells me you did not come to our village looking for forest creatures. Hello, spirit. I seek passage to the Sacred Mountain Shrine. Our village is bound to the shrine's energy, but that power faded long ago. Trapped spirits linger here, tangled in the tragedies of our past. You must help these spirits if you wish to reach the mountain shrine. On my way, I met two children. They asked me to help free a boy named Taro. I'm not surprised that Benny and Saya found you. They are clever children, and would do anything for their brother. We have always crafted wooden masks to honor those who have passed on. Placed here, the masks slowly turn to dust, aiding the spirit's journey into the next life. My father was a spirit guide. Our traditions are different, but he helped many spirits pass from this life to the next. So you know what happens to spirits unable to move on. They turn into tree people. Take Taro's mask. It is bound to his spirit, and will help you fulfill your promise to the children. Look after Benny and Saya. 
Their brother's fate will be difficult for them to understand. Well, that makes it sound like he's not trapped. He's already been corrupted. Or perhaps turned into the tree. Press T to wear spirit masks. Look through the mask to find your way, open spirit barriers, and reveal objects of importance in the environment. Spirit masks are helpful for finding rot hidden in the world. Okay, so we can see the spirit world with this. I wonder what... That, like, there's a circle on it which indicates I should do something there? There's also a trail of footprints. Rot footprints. I wonder if I can... Photo mode her. <laughs> Kinda. Not the clearest, though. Anyhow, this is the sort of game where I could probably just keep playing this for a couple hours. But we're gonna end it here, now that we've made it to the village, and seen kind of a bit of what's going on. I think this is very nice. It's very pleasant. Which is kind of a rarity in games lately. There's not a lot of games you just say it's generally charming. Which is not to say there's a complete absence, just that I guess I have been just playing a lot of horror games lately. Or covering a lot of horror games. Anyhow. You folks all take care, thanks for joining me in this look at Kena Bridge of Spirits, and I'll see you folks in another spirit-related game, I'm sure, because it's almost ghost season, and that means there's going to be a tide of low-budget indie games popping up on Steam about ghosts. <laughs> and until then, y'all take care.